The What Culture Gaming channel is all about passion and you'll find that we love to talk about the games that mean the most to us, from the older titles that we can reminisce about to the newer ones which can push boundaries in terms of gameplay and innovation and storytelling. But as fun as it is to talk about the critically acclaimed, it's also our job to analyse video games as an industry, which has led me to wonder which video games have actually sold the most copies and for that reason I'm Joe Hendry and today we're going to be looking at the 10 best selling video games of all time. Now usually I limit the lists to one game per franchise but because this is based on actual sales figures you may see some crossovers and bundling with consoles that somewhat blurs the lines. Nonetheless here's the 10 best selling video games of all time as of the end of the year 2016. In at number 10 with 30 million units sold it's Diablo 3. Diablo 3 is a hack and slash RPG from Blizzard where you can choose one of six classes and the goal is to defeat the Lord of Terror Diablo. Now this actually set the record at the time as the fastest selling PC game ever, shifting 3.5 million copies in 24. Hours. It also had a feature where you could have hardcore characters which meant that once your character died they were gone from the game for good and you could have some interactions with the ghost of the character but as far as gameplay was concerned once they were dead they were dead which allowed for some interesting gameplay and increased the attachment between you and your character so you can understand why a lot of people fell in love with this game. Now it had a random level generator ensuring the experience that you had was never the same when you played the game and we haven't heard from the Diablo series for a long time but recently rumours have have start to circulate that Diablo 4 is perhaps on its way with Blizzard even placing an ad for an outsourced developer with quote a passion for Diablo so maybe in future we might see some more Diablo titles in a list such as this. In at number 9 it's a throwback to classic gaming with the new Super Mario Brothers for the Nintendo DS shipping 30.79 million units just edging out Diablo 3. Prior to this game's release in 2006, there actually hadn't been an original side-scrolling Mario game since Super Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins. So it had been a very long wait indeed and it was finally time to revitalise the series and bring back Mario to his 2D roots, but this time it actually featured 3D models giving it that nice 2.5D effect on the Nintendo DS. It also had some new features which allowed you to turn Mario and Luigi into giant versions of themselves, tearing through the levels without a care in the world. So you can see why it was successful and this game perhaps gives you an insight into the trend that's about to take place in this list which nicely brings me to my number 8 which is Wii Sports Resort for the Nintendo Wii shipping 32.8 million units. After the success of Wii Sports, Nintendo had also improved the control system and they were ready to show them off. This title came out around the same time as the Motion Plus and once again appeals to the entire family. It was mainstream, it did exactly what it said on the tin, it was on the Wii, it was sports and that's about it. But everyone, including your grand, could play it. This wasn't necessarily fun for the hardcore gamer but this was accessible for all and you can see why it sold so well. Continuing said trend, in at number 7, it's Tetris. This this one's for the Game Boy and it shipped 35 million cartridges. The relationship between the Tetris franchise and Nintendo all began when Tetris was on show at the 1988 Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, which led to a deal where Nintendo would package every single Game Boy with the Tetris cartridge. This led to the sale of 35 million cartridges across the world, and if you were born in the 80s or even the early 90s, you had that game. Now, the concept came about because there were these shapes known as Tetrominoes, which is their four-element version of Stick With Me, Polyominoes, which had been very popular in Russia since the First World War, and this was the video game simulation. And who could forget that iconic theme song? The game is so simple, but so, so good. In at number six, yet another outing for Nintendo, it's Mario Kart for the Wii, released in 2008 and shipped 6.38 million units. After an interesting concept in Double Dash, it was time to take it back to one racer per car and we had smooth graphics, bright colourful levels and it was a perfect party game. Now this is the sixth instalment in the Mario Kart series that we all know and love and it's gone from the SNES, the N64, the Game Boy Advance, the GameCube, the DS and now also the Wii. Couple this party game with the accessible controls on the Wii which allowed everyone to have fun and take part and we're on to a winner. This is a popular franchise that had great 
great gameplay, the fun gimmick with the controls, so we can see why this is sitting as our number six. It also allowed you to put the Wii controller in a steering wheel, which made it even more appealing to casual players. In at number five, Nintendo continues the streak with the classic, the iconic Super Mario Brothers. This is back from 1985 and it shipped an amazing 40 0.24 million units. Whilst this wasn't Mario's first appearance, it was the one that propelled him and his brother to super stardom. So he's given up his job trying to escape the clutches of Donkey Kong and now he's a side-scrolling platforming hero who's out to save the princess. And if you're a human being, the chances are that you've encountered this franchise. This game is widely credited as being the title that ended the crash of the American video game market and revitalized the side-scrolling platforming genre. The game is timeless and its core foundations in principle principles are still intact, alive and well today as we saw earlier in this list with the new Super Mario Brothers. It's fun for kids and adults alike and it's both accessible and challenging in the right places. This isn't just a game, this title is a huge landmark in video gaming history. In at number 4, the Nintendo Street comes to an end as Grand Theft Auto 5 takes center stage. This was from 2013 and it sold 65 million units. This game was billed as an upgraded twist on San Andreas and it allowed you to go between three characters, each with special abilities and intertwining storylines, and it had all the satire that you know and love from the GTA series. The gameplay system is vastly improved from its predecessor Grand Theft Auto 4 with fast and furious driving and an upgraded combat system. Now there were some people who felt there was a bit of a disconnect between the stories due to switching between the three characters and that's up for debate, but what's not up for debate is I think we have to give Rockstar the nod and say that they're the masters of style and substance. They know how to hype a game and deliver on the product as well, and Grand Theft Auto 5 is an impressive living, breathing showcase of what can be achieved in a game. This game sold so well, so quickly that it generated $1 billion of revenue in only 3 days, showing that the sky is the limit for the Grand Theft Auto series. After that quick intermission, we're back with Nintendo once again at our number 3, which is Wii Sports. It was out in 2006 and it shipped 82.78 million units. Now, I know earlier we mentioned Wii Sports Resort, but I'll go into a little more detail about the background of the Wii Sports franchise now. Developer Katsuya Iguchi stated that the goal for Wii Sports was to reach out to consumers who had never played video games before. Wii Sports actually began life before the Wii even existed. It began life is a tech demo where they had this virtual tennis racket and it worked so well that it became its own game and there were actually two areas of development. They had games based on sports and games for the whole family which later took the form of Wii Sports and Wii Play. Now on the Wii Sports side of things we had tennis, golf, baseball, bowling and boxing. And it actually began life with your character being Mario but they said that they wanted the game to feel like you were playing as yourself, not Mario. So they simplified the avatars, allowed you to customise them yourself so it could feel like you really were playing the game. This really did feel like the first time that you could enjoy video games with the entire family for all ages and be on a somewhat level playing field. This is light fun and it appealed to the mass market. In at number 2, steamrolling ahead with 107.86 million units, it's none other than Minecraft. This game has been so successful that the creator Marcus Notch Pearson is now a billionaire. He eventually sold the franchise to Microsoft for 2.5 billion. But let's take a look at the journey that it took to get him there. The original game was called Cave Game and the original Inception only took 6 days to create. The next development stage took 2 years to finally get it out to the mass market. But now Minecraft is a game that's really only limited by your own imagination. And many people from the outside say that it looks like it's inspired by Lego. But guess what? It's so successful it now has its own Lego. Within the game you can enjoy a variety of different modes such as survival, creative, adventure and spectator mode and like Diablo 3 it's even got its own hardcore mode where when you die, you die. So if you're playing that on a server you cannot return to the server if you perish. The game is described as virtually infinite because it's believed that no one could actually, with the time they've got on this earth, reach the end of the game. But the developer has come out and said that the end of the game is there and it's in real terms about the same distance 
divided by four that you are right now to the sun. So good luck reaching the end of that. And what started as a small project has spawned into a worldwide phenomenon, loved by people of all different ages and backgrounds, and it sits comfortably at our number two spot. Now before we get to our number one, I did warn you that there would be a little bit of crossover and some blurred lines because we're dealing with factual sales. And the number one may or may not surprise you, but where Minecraft sold 107.86 million, this one sold 495 million copies. That's half a billion copies. And it's none other than Tetris. Now we mentioned Tetris before because we were talking about specifically on the Game Boy, but this franchise is so strong that since then it's remained alive and well on seemingly every platform and mobile device that's available. And you can get this on your PSP, you can get it on your Windows, you can get it on Android, you can get it on iOS, you can get it on the Nintendo Entertainment System, your PS3, you can get this game everywhere. Tetris has survived the test of time. And whilst it's shifted over 70 million physical copies, it's the 420 25 million paid downloads that have spearheaded it to the very top of this list and it's not even close. I've been Joe Hendry and you can follow me at, at Joe S. Hendry on Twitter. This is What Culture Gaming so make sure that you like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.